short reading for you. Um, and also, would you uh, let me know if you can hear me, if my volume is hearable? Good, okay. Through the waxing and waning light of the sun and the moon, the flowing of day and night, we see the changing forms and faces of the Great Mother in our world. But in the night sky, as the moon fades from sight for three days and three nights, Our Lady also withdraws from the world and descends where the living cannot go. And these are the words of Inanna from the legend of the descent of the goddess. Behold the circle of rebirth. Although all passes through you out of life, all passes through me to be reborn. All must die, all must fade, but even thou art not eternal. I am the dark womb of earth. I am the primal mystery of life. Behold, for within me is the cauldron of rebirth. Enter into me, know me, and you will be free of all fear. For as life has become a journey unto death, through my grace, death shall be a journey into life. In me, the circle shall ever return and forever turn. So let us begin. To the glory of the triple goddess, we kindle the light. Most gracious lady, maiden, and crone of humanity, unknowable mass goddess of the new moon, we welcome you to our circle and ask that you guide us in this deeply inner time of renewal and rebirth. May we connect with the beauty of our own deep soul. And Mary said, until you know the darkness of Sophia, you will not acquire her light. To the glory of the triple goddess, we kindle the light, invoking the dark daughter bride. Kali Kala, come to us through Lilith and be our guide into the darkness and into the brilliance of light that stands within and behind the dark, the brilliance of light that lives within us. Help us to know you as our ally, our protectress and our liberator. Lead us from fear and let us not shun you. Let there be no more separation. Let's say together the holy name of the dark daughter bride, Kali Kala Elohim. 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 To the glory of the triple goddess, we kindle the light, invoking the dark mother. Naomi, come and help us back into the fullness that we are. 
Let us not run from your darkness or our darkness, but stand in its power of revealing its balance of knowing. Let us place your garment of power upon our souls, freeing us from the shame of the dark beauty that the soul of the world brings. And let's say together the holy name of the dark mother of the light of the night, Kali Ima Neyama. Kali Ima Neyama. Kali Ima Neyama. Kali Ima Ima Neyama. Kali Ima Neyama. Kali Ima Neyama. Kali Ima Ima Neyama. Kali Ima Neyama. As we kindle the light, invoking the dark crone of wisdom and dissolution. Come, Igoret, open our minds, crone of the dark, that we may know the truth of your destructive nature, that we may feel its liberating power for all humanity. Let us not turn our faces away but be willing to see the vision of the night in our own souls and that of the world. Help us to cease fearing and trembling so we may stand firmly in our ground of being, knowing war and peace to be one, one within us, one within all. Reveal your secret wisdom of true life. And let us chant together the holy name of the dark crone of wisdom and dissolution, Kali Igaret Sophia. 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 Now, if you would, please continue to breathe in these holy names as we sing together this chant for the dark daughter, bride, the dark mother, and the dark crone of wisdom and dissolution.
Let's just continue to breathe in those holy names. Breathing in the vibration of the triple goddess of the dark moon. Opening your heart as you listen for the voice of the triple goddess. Breathe these names into your heart, out through your heart, waiting for the voice that speaks to you this night, this day. Listen for the voice of guidance, of love, of renewal, rebirth within your inner being. Which voice will speak to you? Listen.
Ja, Maria. Goddess of the dark moon, renewer of life, we thank you for your presence here this evening, and we bid you farewell until next we meet in your darkness. Bless us and restore us in readiness for what lies ahead. Go in peace. If you'd all like to, you can join me if you want to rise as we say our final affirmations or you may be seated and just uh, repeat these words after me. I am and I am becoming. I am pure radiant awareness. Ya Mariam, blessed be. So uh, I'm going to leave for a couple of minutes to get set up for our next session. And I'll leave it with Anna. She's got some beautiful artwork to show you and maybe do some sharing. So I'll be back shortly. <laughs> so hello, beloveds. As um, I mentioned in our email that with this new moon, there may be some aspirations of yours that you want to share with new beginnings or letting go of things that uh, no longer serve you. And as I was contemplating this, um, I was doing an art journaling page and I just wanted to share this with you and some of the things that came up for me. So I'm just going to share this screen with you. Um, Right. Can you see that? So what I've yes. got... Yes, good. Thank you, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see it. <laughs> yeah. So I was contemplating the, the triple goddess um, with this work that we're doing and uh, reading the Divine Feminine from um, Megan Don. And I was quite amazed. I had no idea how this would turn out. But I could see that all the aspects of the Mother Maiden and Crone, the light and the dark, are all aspects of the one primordial, limitless uh, light, which was the Einsof Ore that I um, wrote at the, at the bottom of the oval part. And that to me was like it took me into this portal of, uh, you know, in the the boundless light from which everything comes, the dark and the light is inclusive of all of it. So I could see that the light and the dark. So I had the uh, invocations of the daughter of light up the top and the daughter of dark on the left-hand side and the daughter of dark on the right. And then Nukva Or is the, um, the Hebrew uh, letters of the, uh, or the words of that chant, daughter of light. And uh, as you can see, then the, the mother unfolded in the middle and it all enfolded in one big vulva, which was like I had not even imagined that that would, ca would happen, but it happened. And then um, Igoret, like the crone of light and the crone of dark, was on the, uh, the bottom half. So anyway, it just, it made me see that, um, yeah, the light and the dark were all part of, of oneness. And for me to experience that, and I'm thinking through this time when I've um, had to, you know, practice more isolation, although I haven't been that well at isolating, but uh, in, in actual fact, the one-to-one -one relationships that I've been able to have have been a, like in a deeper communion. So rather than a connection, it's been a deeper communion. And I think it's like this the triple goddess, these, all these energies take us into these deeper places in our being of new ways of being. So in this new moon, 
I invoke for myself new ways of being, overcoming old ways of looking at things or doing things and, and endeavouring to, to look at things in a different way and that everything is being birthed, continually being birthed. It's being destroyed, but it's being birthed again. So I was, yeah, just amazed that came out of it. You know, the picture speaks to me in so many ways and the rose, the symbol of Mary Magdalene came out as the with the mother and the um, Ama Ayima on the left and the Kali Ima Naama on the right and the spiral of life and the triple goddess. It was, anyway, it was just something that um, I wanted to share with you because it, it happened this week. I thought, wow, this will be great to share with the girls. Anyway, I'll stop that. Now. Does anyone else have anything they want to share in their contemplation of the new moon? Just unmute yourself and share. Yeah, I'd love to share. Yeah. Um, it was my birthday on Wednesday on World Earth Day, the oh, 22nd. Birthday. <laughs> so I was happy to celebrate that um, doing the Tara dances in the morning. But I visited my friend in the afternoon, Angela, who was with us in Auckland for the Magdalena. And she gave me some things, but one of the things she gave me was this beautiful, um, it's off a cedrus, some kind of fir or pine tree, and it's actually a rose. Wow. And it's just the most gorgeous little symbol. So I'm, I'm carrying that with me. And my, my two um, pumices that I got from Lake Taupo on the way up to Auckland, the, I picked up the white one in the lake, and then I turned around and went, there's another one for me, and this beautiful little pink one. <laughs> caught my eye and I didn't at that stage I didn't know the story of the stone of the eggs and the um with yeah coming into that understanding which I can't say right now so I just wanted to share that much thank you thank you very beautiful <laughs> and just birthing love that's my my journey at the moment is just coming into love <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah for <ta. laughs> <laughs> Would anyone else like to share? I have a feeling Faranissa has something to say. Could that be true, Faranissa? You can unmute yourself. Um, I always have something to say. It's true. <laughs> um, particularly for this year, uh, the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, um, I was very moved by so many young people uh, in my community, in my church, who are taking this torch and carrying it on and they weren't even born. They weren't even born when Earth Day started. So what has touched me, what I'm taking, the seed I'm planting this new moon has to do with our mother, the earth, and that we as her children get to choose how we love her and what that means for future generations of her children. Yes, and, and this morning we had something we can commemorate Anzac Day, lest we forget the ones who have fallen in war. And of course, all the isolation, there was no ritual evident when we came there. But the timing, I got really prompted to go out to do my morning practices outside with Andrew. And the very time that we were there to offer the two, we had two beautiful bright pink dahlias. I brought the divine feminine in. Two policemen came and I thought, oh officer. God, commanding officers, I thought, are they going to tell us to move on or what, you know? But they actually had a beautiful wreath and, um, and they reverently put it up there on the memorial piece. And then I really felt inspired to do the, um, the peace prayer of Hazrat in Iyak Khan. They were so moved. And then the women from the RSL came and, and they 
did their little ritual and and I sang a chant for them and I thought wow Mary Magdalene really I felt was guiding me there to to balance out the masculine energy and the feminine but to bring the richness of what we have in, in, into that ritual moment um, so that you know we may have peace and no more war anyway who else would like to share before we move on to Amina yes Elizabeth please unmute yourself Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to share that um, I feel deep in a state of being lost and it has been for a long time and, um, and instead of um, being, you know, mourning and being very negative or whatever, I'm taking the opportunity of this dark moon to plunge even deeper and uh, with courage and um, and i know of course the opposite that there is light in the dark and um, i'm allowing that light in the darkness to to guide me and to make me feel supported comforted and knowing that the, the light does exist as well on the other side so i wanted to share this thank you very much thank you one thing that um, has come to me too that in this time Mary Magdalene we have some men here or one or man one, one, man, <laughs> so one, cat. <laughs> one cat but it's really a deepening of the sisterhood and to know that we come together we have this deep communion and the enlightened souls that help us and support our being but to know that we are each all part of that matrix that we can support each other so thank you Elizabeth we're there for you so Amina, is there, is there anyone else desperate to say something, share something? No, just beautiful to see all your faces. So Amina, I've seen how I can pin you now. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. There's those three little blue buttons by your screen. All and right. You are now pinned. Okay, I'm pinned. Um, well, before I get started, I want to mention that at the end of our session, uh, Anna's going to put a sheet up on the screen that has our con both of our contact information. Um, for those of you who would like to continue on with the series, um, our plan is to offer this same format uh, twice a month on the new and the full moons, uh, starting with a ritual and then uh, the second half being a class uh, learning more about the Gospel of Mary Magdalene and the, and the Rosary. Uh, using the rosary as spiritual practice to deepen into the gospel. So that will be up on the screen. Even if you're already on one of our mailing lists, we'd like to have a separate one for those people who want to continue because we will be sending out handouts from, you know, for each week. So, um, and uh, you don't have to decide if you just want to show up, that's fine. Uh, so, um, we're going to begin uh, starting with the Mary Rosary Prayer. Anna, if you'll put that up oh, for yes. us. Okay. Okay. Share screen. Blessed are you, Miriam, for you did not waver at the sight of the risen Master. You who were his companion and whom he loved more than any other woman. Holy Bride, Apostle of the Apostles, be at my right shoulder today as I walk forth in the infinite light and bless me with your eternal presence. Amen. So who all here has heard or read or both um, the one uh, version of the Gospel of Mary Magdalene? If you just raise your hands, if you have. Susan, wonderful. Okay. I can't see everybody on the screen, so um, at least a few of you. And is there anybody here who has not 
uh, been in, who has not danced Dances of Universal Peace or and or the Merry Dances, who has not? Because uh, we have this tradition called Dancing with Mary Magdalene. So I figured some of you would be here uh, for that. And is there anybody here who is completely new to any of this? I see no hands. Yes. <laughs> Good. Well, um, as I mentioned, the rosary, which I'm wearing, let me show you this. Uh, this is the Mary Magdalene Gospel Rosary that uh, I created during the first year uh, of after the first dances started coming in. Um, and they were created uh, as what I call prayer beads as opposed to a rosary uh, and um, were designed for using the holy names of God in Hebrew. There are 72 of those, and so we have 72 of the red beads. These also come in white, but um, I didn't have a white one to show you tonight. Uh, the separator beads, these white beads, represent the 10 sephiro on the tree of life, the Kabbalistic tree of life. Uh, and so that was the, the um, system that I used. And I, and I really modeled it after uh, the um, Sufi prayer beads, which uh, use the 99 beautiful names of God. And you have divisions of 11. And with these, you have divisions of seven, because seven is a very significant number in the life of Mary Magdalene and biblically, apart from her. And so I introduced this rosary just last year. Um, it, it transmuted from prayer beads to rosary, but it's the same numbers. And that happened because I um, was so blessed to read a book called Waking Up to the Dark by Clark Strand, uh, who has a very active movement called um, The Way of the Rose. And it's all about his encounter, encounters with Mother Mary and how she spoke to him about the use of the rosary among many, many other things uh, and how it's a movement more focused on prayer than specifically saying the traditional um, Catholic rosary, but using that for spiritual practice. And that's, that is also the purpose of the Mary Magdalene Rosary. It's a way, um, a way to use as a tool to deepen into the path that Mary has given us in the gospel, the ascent of the soul. And you can also count on your fingers. So uh, it's not mandatory to have a string of beads to do this. Um, so I wanted to, um, begin by just showing you these a few of these various gospels there are quite a few um, commentaries that have been written uh, the one that drew me to Mary Magdalene or through which she appeared to me was this one by Jean-Yves Le Loup who is a um, French mystic and monk and um, I believe very well known more in Europe than in this country, but he has been over here. Um, Karen L. King, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Then there are two by Cynthia Bourgeau, uh, uh, an American mystic who's very, very active, has a wisdom school in this country and, and internationally. Uh, and this book called The Luminous Gospels, um, also, we have the Gospel of Thomas and Philip, and then her commentary on Mary Magdalene. And then this, this is one of, the, my, one of my favorite commentaries called The Way, The Meaning of Mary Magdalene, and it's also in here. And then we have Marvin Meyer, who collected uh, various Gnostic Gospels of Mary Magdalene and put them all in this little book. And he is one of the um, translators and work of people who worked on translating the Nag Hammadi Library, 
Is there anyone here who's not familiar with the Gnostic Gospels of Nag Hammadi? Okay. Okay. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail, but in 1945, um, in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, um, in a cave, the, there were these huge urns, pottery urns that were found that contained these ancient uh, papyrus scrolls. And it turns out that they were filled with gospels from the days of the early days of Christianity, uh, the early days of Jesus and uh, other religions during that era. And so they've been translated over the years and published. Uh, the Mary Magdalene gospel was discovered before that, but is now part of it. One I recently discovered is by J.J. Hertak, who wrote The Keys of Enoch. If anyone's familiar with that, very esoteric study. And then uh, we have one that's sort of a standalone, which I'm currently using as a guide for the rosary. And this is called The Gospel of the Beloved Companion uh, by Jeanne de Quillen, who is a French woman uh, and lives in southern France in a community devoted to Mary Magdalene. And this is um, said to be a gospel that Mary brought to with her when she landed in France and this community was founded around the story of this gospel. Uh, this one I'll talk about more next week. So we have all these gospels uh, to draw from and it's not mandatory that you read these or have one uh, but if you do uh, use one of them that you particularly enjoy then you'll find the information about uh, the, the prayers that we'll be using in, the, in that book. Um, what I wanted to do was share a few excerpts um, just to give you a synopsis of what's contained in Mary's Gospel. And this one is from uh, Karen King. At the time she wrote this, she said, few people today are acquainted with the Gospel of Mary. Written early in the second century CE, it disappeared for over 1500 years until a single fragmentary copy in Coptic translation came to light in the late 19th century. Although details of the discovery itself are obscure, we do know that the 5th century manuscript in which it was inscribed was purchased in Cairo by Karl Reinhardt and brought to Berlin in 1896. Two additional fragments in Greek have come to light in the 20th century, yet still no complete copy of the Gospel of Mary is known. Fewer than eight pages of the ancient papyrus text survive, which means that about half of the Gospel of Mary is lost to us perhaps forever. Yet these scant pages provide an intriguing glimpse into a kind of Christianity lost for almost 1500 years. This astonishingly brief narrative presents a radical interpretation of Jesus' teachings as a to inner spiritual knowledge. It rejects his suffering and death as the path to eternal life. It exposes the erroneous view that Mary of Magdala was a prostitute for what it is, a piece of theological fiction. It presents the most straightforward and convincing argument in any early Christian writing for the legitimacy of women's leadership. It offers a sharp critique of illegitimate power and a utopian vision of spiritual perfection. It challenges our rather romantic views about the harmony and unanimity of the first Christians. And it asks us to rethink the basis for church authority, all written in the name of a woman. And um, the gospel is divided into two parts, um, basically because um, there are these pages missing in the middle of it. 
but it seems uh, that there really is a distinct difference in the two parts. The first part is um, between Jesus and the disciples, and most of the writers believe that these, these events occurred after the resurrection. So he is meeting with the disciples and giving them lessons and answering questions and teachings. And then he leaves. And then the next part goes like this. He, he commissions them to go forth and preach, and then he leaves. But the disciples do not go out joyfully to preach the gospel. Instead, controversy erupts. All the disciples except Mary have failed to comprehend the Savior's teaching. Rather than seek peace within, they are distraught, frightened that if they follow his commission to preach the gospel, they might share his agonizing fate. Mary steps in and comforts them, and at Peter's request, relates teaching unknown to them that she had received from the Savior in a vision. The Savior had explained to her the nature of prophecy and the rise of the soul to its final rest, describing how to win the battle against the wicked, illegitimate powers that seek to keep the soul entrapped in the world and ignorant of its true spiritual nature. And therein answered a mystery for me, which I could never figure out. What were these seven demons? Well, as it turns out, it's these seven powers that try to block our way up the path of ascension. But as she finishes her account, two of the disciples quite unexpectedly challenge her. And then it goes on to how Peter and Andrew give her a hard time and Eli comes to her rescue and supports her and then tells them that they should all go out and spread the gospel as Jesus had commissioned them to do. And that's the end of the gospel. So last year, uh, as I said, was when I began to feel uh, really drawn back to the gospel for this particular part of it. And I realized that uh, Mary's path of devotion has always been an inner path. And that I felt for myself uh, getting more deeply, a more deep understanding of these powers and this ascent, this journey that she took, uh, could only help my own growth and understanding of how to proceed, you know, how to proceed in my own deepening. Um, Kali Kala has a question. I see she's raised her hand, but I don't see her. No? Okay. Um, so, um, I introduced this uh, rosary last year at our annual retreat um, around the uh, feast day of Mary, and both Anna and Ferenisa were there, uh, Lucy was there, Nuranisa was there, um, I don't know, is there anybody else here who was there who, who I can't see? Um, so behind the scenes since then, uh, Anna and Fernisa have been helpful and supportive and throwing in their two cents about um, how this, you know, should or could unfold and, you know, with me just tearing out my hair because I didn't get it. And so I've asked both of them if they would share their experience because what, um, I believe is so important about any spiritual practice is that you make it your own. And I offer this, um, this particular uh, guide as a place to begin. Um, but I believe that if uh, when you hear Anna's and Fairnice's spin, um, you'll understand that it's very much um, a personal um, choice, you know, what resonates to you, um, I resonate to Hebrew because I have a long history of studying the Kabbalah. Um, Anna read, uh, resonates in Fairnisa also to the Sufi Arabic. Uh, many of us have studied with uh, Saadi Neil Douglas Klotz. There is Aramaic also, as you know, in the dances. 
So um, it's a mixed bag. So Anna, would you like to start? Well, I found um, being re-inspired to do the rosary here <clears throat> that it's it's been a personal journey each day by just saying one of the powers. Oops. So, for instance, um, you, you know, I was str struggling with something uh, in within my own to know my own wisdom and understanding, and the second power is I eat the fruit of wisdom and understanding and I'm freed from ignorance and intolerance. Just saying that and then repeating the uh, the Hebrew phrase, but I also like to include some of the beautiful names of God. So I've created, you know, the beautiful names of God that go with each of the powers. Uh, it's just another way of deepening. But what I found that it, it deeply... Um, it took me into another realm, into another space where I could see things beyond myself, beyond my own understanding, my, my limited understanding. It helped me get to a place of, of uh, acceptance. I think that was it, like an acceptance, but also um, a widening of my view, a widening of embracing, like in my heart, uh, we talk about this a lot and I've done the practices where the heart can contain all things. Well, yes, but it takes a while before you can create that accommodation to make it and be able to do that. Um, and I feel that working with these powers is helping this accommodation of the heart. And um, me also embracing my dark and light and seeing how the dark and light is all part of the one. So, yeah, it's been very helpful. And so I continue each day. And, and really, you know, I'm, I'm not really religious about it. Sometimes I do all the, full, in the um, prayers before or after. But I include some of the prayers like the Mary Prayer in our morning ritual practice anyway and the Lord's Prayer I always do each day. So I might not do it in the rosary thing, but I, I definitely enter in with Yamariyam and um, exit with Yamariyam. And then there's a beautiful prayer right at the beginning which really acknowledges the lord as being the lord of the light and of the darkness so that was a kabbalistic invocation that we'll share with you and i just find that that's a really good place to start acknowledging that we all you know we're part of this continuum of light and darkness uh, and let me just say at this point before fear nisa shares that last year uh, I was using a version of the powers found in all of these uh, uh, commentaries that I mentioned. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, but then um, later in the year, I was more drawn to the uh, Gospel of the Beloved Companion that I mentioned uh, and I started working with those, that version of the powers. And so that's where I'm at with it right now. And we'll see where Fair is at. So um, I'll take you back a year uh, when um, this practice first began being inspired to Amina. And she shared with me the process and what was arising. And I was able to experience uh, the early versions of this rosary. And I'll so the first thing I did, let me share my screen with you. So the first thing I did was I made my own rosary. So this is um, the little dove on the end I got years ago in Assisi. And the white beads are from a necklace of my deceased mother. So it's a very dear uh, talisman for this practice for me. It has a lot of meaning. So I just wanted you to see that. And uh, I remember the first time that I went through on this rosary with the practice as it was given at the time through the seven powers and at the very end of the practice 
there was just this um, deepening into numinous awareness and very much like uh, was shared before um, there's a real power in this practice that comes through as we connect with these seven powers they're like seven gifts from uh, Miriam of Magdala and I just want to share the one of the last parts of this practice that is very meaningful to me as we go through the powers and come back around the beads to the end to the closing this is something that has been very meaningful to me recently this closing prayer this sentence from the closing prayer we are free to remember eternity it's like when we let these uh, powers help us and support us in being released that's what the ultimate gift is that we are eternal beings in all directions all of us are and that's been particularly meaningful for me in the last few weeks and months so i'd like to just invite you to share a bit um breathing in we are free to remember eternity breathing out the last phrase of the rosary ya mariam breathing in we are free to remember eternity breathing out ya mariam Thank you, Fernisa and Anna, for those lovely sharings. And thank you for rem reminding me of um, how beautiful that first version is. And now I'm wondering, can I just combine both of them somehow and uh, get it all in there? Doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, so um, just a quick word about what the format of these classes will be, and then we'll uh, have time for some questions and sharing uh, before we close. Um, so uh, in our, first, our class next week, I will uh, we'll go more in depth into the uh, uh, gospel itself, uh, focusing on the part, on this part, uh, which the rosary is based. And then we will go through the first power, uh, re, uh, going through the beginning part of the rosary and focusing on the first power. And with each power, there is um, the phrase, um, as Anna uh, had read one while ago, a little while ago, there's also a God name in Hebrew, which we will chant that goes along with that, that particular power. Um, and so there'll be time for um, saying saying the power, chanting, and then a breath practice with the chant. So that will all be part of each session. I'll also teach you the opening rituals there too. Uh, one is the uh, Kabbalah invocation, which Anna mentioned, and the other is the Kabbalistic cross, which is an invocation of light. And um, and at the beginning and end of each session, we'll start with discussion, questions, and answers, and then we'll, we'll close with that also. Um, so I'm going to open it up for any questions or comments that you might have. And uh, at the end of that, uh, we'll close with um, the Mary Dance, the song, one of the songs from a Mary Dance called the Shekinah Invocation which is uh, associated with the first power. That's the other thing. This is, uh, I should have said, this is a work in progress, guys. <laughs> so every day as I, as I do one of these, uh, something else comes. So uh, this week it was, oh, by the way, one of the merry dances, you know, will go with each of these and they've been coming through as I do for the powers. So I love it. Wonderful. 
Amina. Yes. I've, I've just been asked about listing the seven powers. So maybe it's a good idea. I said we'd send it out to everyone, but yeah. maybe it's a good idea for people to understand that in each of the powers, you've got like the light and the dark. Like, for instance, the first one, I eat the fruit of love and compassion and I am freed from judgment and wrath. So yeah. that's what I like. It's not about just listing the powers. There's the power to overcome to be freed from so right. in each of those powers we have both statements are made which i find is really powerful but uh i don't know if, we, if you want to read them out now but i thought we could just send them out to everyone so if someone's yeah. not on our on my database or on Lin amina's let us know yeah okay yes it's ba basically you could use them as affirmations like yeah. Uh, in so many of our spiritual traditions, we have affirmations that we use, and this is in that category. Mm -hmm. Yes, Susan. Um, I would love you to share again the structure of the, um, the rosary, and I just wanted to share with you something that's been happening for me um, ever since we did our um weekend in october um Zevanisa, and 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 what i keep finding and i've got goosebumps all over me as i start talking about this is all of these important mary symbols were already present when i looked in the little altars that i'd made around the place and things that i'd done there she was already and it was like ah, i never left you know here i am but again, I made um, a, a set of prayer beads mm. a few years back. And do you know how I made them? It's a series of red beads with white ones intermediate on it. And I'm going, oh, my God, again, there it is. <laughs> so I would love, it's actually broken. I would love to repair this. Um, so can you? Um, just put up what the actual structure. Yeah, of... and I actually have it written up and I'd be happy to send it to you. Wonderful. But I'll, I'm going to put myself in speaker view or, or am I in speaker view? Oh, no. Okay. Um, if I speak, no, I'm still small. Okay. Well, you're big on my screen. Okay. Yeah, that always confuses me. All right. So, um, we have what I call the beginning beads, the big bead, which is uh, which we say the Aramaic Lord's Prayer, then the two introductory beads, uh, and then a separator bead, or um, I don't know what its official name is. Fairnisa, do you know what that's, those are called? No, okay. Uh, and so between each of those is seven. So we for a total, and we have the 10 white beads representing the 10 Sephiro on the tree of life. So, seventy. Oh, could I just yes. make a, a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Maybe write this up and send it out. Yeah, it is written up, but so I was just going to show. Yeah, yeah, because it's after nine and it's okay. really late for me. Okay. I, I right. can't imagine our folks down under what you must be going through. But <laughs> it's been a long week and a long day, and um, that would be great if it could be in a form I could actually digest at some point yeah. thank you okay let me make a note so that i won't forget to do that when we send out stuff for next week mm. thank you did that help susan that's great thank you okay so i think anyone else anyone else Okay. Oh, I think it's good. So if you'll uh, put up that um, contact sheet for us, and then um, we'll just close with the uh, Shekinah invocation music, and you can leave uh, whenever you feel ready to do so. And Shekinah music. Anna, what would um, 
good for me to see if you can share that on email? Sorry? Can you share that information on email that's up on the screen? Sure. Thank you. This is for those who don't already have it. Anna, you can't mute yourself. You turned the music off. Anna, we can't hear the music. Yeah, Mariam. Yeah, Mariam. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We'll send out some materials for you. And if you want to donate at all, I'll give you some contact details to help the work keep going. But yeah, so we'll share the references, the rosary guide, and um, the how to make one. And so, in a couple of weeks' time, with the new moon, with the full moon, we shall gather together again. And if people, uh, if it's easier for you because it's getting late in the States, we could make it half an hour earlier. An hour earlier. An hour earlier. Yeah. You can make it 9 a.m. So in between. 9 a.m. is a bit early for us. But <laughs> nine, so we make it 9.30 here. It'll be 7.30 for you there. That would so, help. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. So, Mariam, everybody, be blessed. Find the deep silence and the renewal of your beings amen, amen. <laughs> thank you amina thank you faranissa thank you everyone for sharing very beautiful okay and meeting